Welcome back, ladies and gents, to the Tree and Shoe Repair channel. If you're new here, my name's Dan. Now, today's episode is something that's particularly niche, but a lot of you have actually requested to make this video, and that is we're talking about the leather sole stitching machine. I'm going to show you how it works, all the intricacies of it, all the moving parts, and just go through it, really. So, I don't expect all of you to make it to the end, but I'm quite excited to make this video. I've got a couple of shoes, cool shoes that need stitching. So, without further ado, here we go. So once again, welcome back guys. Hope you're all doing fantastic. We've got a whole bunch of brass toe plate action going on there, haven't we? Anyway, to start the video off, just before we go to the machine, I wanted to very briefly talk about exactly what we're doing, especially for you guys that are new, so it makes sense. So when we're putting a new leather sole on a shoe, it has to be glued on and stitched on, and there's a few different stitching styles. Today we're doing an outsole stitch. So if I can go like this, you can see those threads there, they're stitched through what's called the welt. So the machine is stitching through the bottom of the sole, or rather the new leather sole, through to the outside of the shoe, the welt there, the outside, that's why it's called an outsole stitch. So let's check out the machine. So this is the outsole stitcher. If you've seen any of my videos, you'll have seen me using this beast many times, stitching shoes together, and his name is Victor. And the reason for that is it's a Victor outsole stitcher. There's three main makes of outsoles. You've got a Victor, a Goodyear, and a Landis. And why I want to address is the Goodyears are the most common. What you hear all the time is a shoe being Goodyear welted, and that's different to what we're talking about today. There's such a thing as a welting machine, a Goodyear welting machine. It rapidly stitches the welt on rather than doing it by hand. And then when it comes to stitching the soles on or repairing them, we use an outsole machine to stitch the sole on. Now he's very old, I'm going to say he's at least 60 years old, he's had a bunch of different owners. New ones of these cost about 15,000, so we'll put up with it for now. He's got a few missing pieces, but it works like a treat for me. He's a bit of a Frankenstein machine, so I'm going to pull it out so we can look at it better. It's a bit heavy, so bear with me. Ah, come on then. So there we go, it's out. I don't know why they didn't put wheels on this thing. Must be about 100 kilos. Ron certainly wasn't any help. So I'm struggling to figure out where to start with this machine. I think I'm going to show you how we thread the machine. Then I'm going to show you the basic principle of how it works. Then I'm going to show you the individual parts and then finish up with stitching some shoes. So as it is here, everything's tucked away. But first things first, we're going to open up the lid, case, hood, whatever you want to call it, so that we can get to everything. Actually, the first thing we're going to do before anything is give the machine a good oil. Any responsible cobbler is going to oil this machine. The machine will thank you for it in the long run. So we're just going to pump away and get some oil on the cams, on the top and inside. So to get the oil inside the machine and lube up all the components, we've got these tiny little oil ports dotted around the machine. So we're just going to take our pump, get him in there. It's hard to do while filming. <laughs> and then just pump a bit of oil in number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So to get the oil where we want it, we're just going to take the turning wheel, manually rotate it a few cycles, just to get the oil spread around everywhere, so everything's nice and smooth. And you really can tell the difference with a nice oiled up machine when you're stitching. Okay, so the next thing we're going to show you is the thread and how the machine's threaded, because let's be honest, it's one of the most important pieces, because without the thread there would be no stitches. Now there's a top and bottom thread. The top one is here, inside the shuttle and bobbin. It's quite simple. The bottom thread, however, is very intricately wound, and the reason being is it gives it a specific tension, and that's one of the more important things you have to be aware of with these machines, because if the tension's wrong, it won't stitch right. It will leave big loops of stitching on top, or it will snap before it's even made a stitch. So the bottom thread starts down here on the spool. I've got white in just so I can uh, show you nicely. Comes up through here and down towards what's called the brake. 
I'm just now realizing why I put off filming this video for so long and that's because it's remarkably hard to shoot by myself. But anyway, we can see the thread coming over this bar here and down, this is what I'm gonna show you, it's called the brake. So the brake is made up of two moving bars and it goes under the first bar, back on itself through the gap and then over the top of the second one. So I'm just gonna move the machine through a cycle and you'll see, partial cycle rather, see it open up and close again. So when it opens up, that's when the machine wants slack and it will allow the thread to be pulled through as the shoe moves along and then it locks up again to keep it in place so the tension stays tight. So this is the most common form of an issue. If the thread is looping on top, or it's just not working, it's usually because it's come out of the brake. So you just go check that, it's your first thing to check. So once he's over the brake, which is those two prongs there, he has to come through a series of holes. So first one you can see there, and these, these parts all move. I can, there we are, see them? So you can imagine when this comes completely unthreaded, it's hard to rethread. And then he, there, that hole and then through the front. Should go through this little peg here, but like I said, it works better without it for this machine, which brings us to the wax pot. Now, this was originally filled with wax, and the reason being is when these machines first came out, they used linen thread, and it needed to be waxed because that's how a stitch locks in place tightly and is waterproof. But now we have pre-waxed polyester, so there's no need for wax in the wax pot. It still has to run around the wheels, though. Now, these two screws here are just another way to adjust tension. And it goes up through not one, but two tension wheels, and then up through the middle of the looper, and through the table bed, and then locked away, tucked away, just so it's neat. So that brings us on to the top thread, which to be fair is a little easier. We just need to remove the shuttle housing, take out the shuttle from its home, okay? And then inside, we just pop this out. Inside the shuttle is the bobbin, and that's what's full of our top thread. And it's threaded through a small tension bar on the inside, that's how we adjust the tension on the shuttle. And then we have to rotate it, where is he? Just into the right place. There we go, back in. And the thread just sits out like that. And that is our thread. Okay, so I'm quickly gonna show you the different parts and then show you how the machine's gonna make a stitch. So firstly, we've got the table bed. That's what the shoe sits against. Then we've got the table guide. This is adjustable backwards and forwards so we can get the shoe in the right position. This is the guide arm, which sits down, holds the shoe in place. Needle, needle guide. The awl here is that sharp little spear that's gonna poke up through the bottom of the shoe. Uh, what else have we got? You can't quite see him up there. Splitter, I'll show you him in a minute. So imagine the shoe's on the machine. He's sitting there and we're gonna stitch through it. So the first thing that's gonna happen if I rotate the cycle is the awl there is going to punch up through the bottom, pow, make a hole in the shoe, ready for the needle to then go through down because the needle's not strong enough to do it on its own. Once the awl comes up, it's then going to move across to the left. It's going to move the shoe where we want it. So you don't actually have to feed the machine, the shoe through the machine. The machine's gonna feed the shoe through on its own. So the awl's gonna go down. Down now, it's gonna come out of the shoe. And next two things are gonna happen at once. The needle is going to come down. And if I just change the angle, what you guys want to look at is this guy here. It's called the looper. What he's gonna do is bring the thread around and wrap it onto the needle. Did you see that? He pulls it around and just hooks it onto the needle, and then the needle is gonna pull it back up through the machine. And this is where the magic happens. The splitter comes down in between the loop of the thread. There we go, see? Spreads it in half, and then the shuttle comes and catches it, pulls it up, and makes a stitch. And then the cycle starts again. Okay, so that's how the machine works. I hope when I watch it back, you guys are able to see it, okay? Now, remember all those parts, all the parts are adjustable and they can all go wrong. So that's why it's very important to know how these machines work so you can diagnose when it's not stitching quite right and how to fix it. And believe me, it took a lot of trial and error myself. Don't worry, I'm not sponsored by Coke. I always have a Coke 
when I'm working on the machines. And the reason being is nostalgic for me. When I first learned how to use these machines, when I first learned how to do shoe repairs is back when I worked for Timpson and they used to run training courses where there'd be maybe just two of you or five people and one training manager. And there would always be a Coke. Someone would always have a Coke. <laughs> so it reminds me of those training days. Anyway, so now hopefully you're more familiar with exactly what the machine's doing. Let's stitch a sole on, see it in action. Right, so here we've got our demonstration shoe. And before I get the sole on, I'll show you something that's very important when we're doing professional shoe repairs, and that is removing the old stitches. And now that you guys have a better understanding of how the machine works, you'll understand why. We don't want old threads in the way of the new stitches because it just makes a mess. Uh, so we have to remove these and not just haphazardly stitch over them like some maniac cobblers like to do. And then it's going to leave holes, you can see, there we are, for the new stitches to sit in. So the awl isn't actually going to have to punch a new hole in the leather well, at least in the welt section, it's just gonna go through these existing holes and it's a much neater, more beautiful way to do the job. So our sole is all on, trimmed around. We're using wares today, British leather. Now, something that's worth talking about is the groover. So what the groover is going to do is cut a channel in the leather so that the, the stitches are sit depressed down inside so they're not sitting on top or else they'd get worn away straight away. Now this is a carbide cutter and it's adjustable. The depth here is adjustable. So we need to make sure that the depth here is the same as the depth we've got set on the, uh, the outsole stitcher for where the shoe sits on the machine so that the needle and the awl are gonna come through up in the right place where we've put our groove. Okay, so now our leather sole is grooved. We're going to stitch it on and what we want to do is stitch through the original holes like i said and there's a couple of things we can do to make that happen the first is if i can show you there i've done that to demonstrate for you i've put some pen marks on the sole which show me exactly where the original holes are and the distance they are apart when i'm looking at the shoe this way so this gives us something to aim for when we're punching the all through and the needle going down and then we can see uh, if the stitch is the right distance apart as well and i'll show you how we can adjust the machine so it does that for us Right, so you'll see I've changed the thread to brown, so it matches the color of the shoe on the top. And there's two things we need to pay attention to now. And the first is the table guide. So that's gonna determine how far the, the shoe sits on the machine, backwards and forwards. And then the stitch length, which is um, how far the awl is going to move the shoe along to make the stitch length. So for the table guide here, we've got this lever at the top. We move it backwards and forwards, and it's gonna adjust the depth of the table guide. And the stitch length, is this big lever here it comes up and down and it's going to change the distance that the awl travels so let's put the shoe on and see how close we are okay so arm comes up we get our shoe on the table bed line it up and see how we are so all comes up moves the shoe along needle goes through the hole picks up the thread splitter splits it makes a stitch and the awl's already come up moved it along to go in the next hole. So I'll just do this manually for a bit so you can see stitches being made. And we'll see how close we are to our target. Okay, so if I just pull him out, you should be able to see, there we are, our stitches pretty much bang on where we want them. So let's go ahead and do the whole thing. So we're gonna whack the power on here, the motor, it's going to turn the wheel, which is going to turn the belt, and the top wheel, which is going to power up the whole thing. And then when we're ready to put the thing under power, we're going to hit the uh, pedal here.
So then we just pull the end threads tight, cut them off, and hammer down the stitches. So that's it, sole stitched on, white thread on the bottom, brown on top, uh, through the existing holes. That's the proper way to do it. If you do it like that, then the, the original welt is gonna be good for five, six, seven resoles with no issue. If you don't do it, you do, like I said, you chew up the welt by stitching over the top of old threads or don't go through the existing holes, you punch new holes in it. And before you know it, the welt is like Swiss cheese and you need to replace it, which is a big job. So it's well worth doing it like this. Anyway, I'm not gonna leave you there. I think I've got time at the end of this video to squeeze in this cool blue shoe, which we're doing a different kind of stitch. I'm gonna Blake stitch these, so let me show you that. Okay, folks, so this is our Blake stitcher machine. It's a lot bigger, or sometimes called a McKay stitch, or a lock stitch, depending on where you're from. The difference is the style of stitch that it does. So rather than an outsole, where we stitch to the outside of the welt, what we're actually doing is, is stitching through the sole again, but through the inside of the shoe, through the footbed. So we have to remember to take any linings out that we can, or else we chew them all up. I'm not gonna talk you through the whole machine, but it's a similar concept where the bottom thread has a lot of pulleys intricate setup and the shuttle at the top of the bobbin is quite simple. So let's go ahead and stitch these boys on. something about hammering the stitches on a Blake stitch is of course we need to hammer them flat so they feel flat on the inside so you don't feel the stitches when you're wearing them. Got to think of that comfort. Pretty cool. All right so that is it guys that's the end of the video that's all I've got to show you today but I hope you enjoyed seeing how the stitcher works it was obviously a little bit different I enjoyed filming it but what I do want to say is hit the notifications bell because the next video I'm doing, I'm really excited about. It's something really different and it's really cool. So make sure to catch that. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Give me a big thumbs up. If you did make it all the way to the end, hit like, helps me with the channel. And don't forget to check out our website, treesurepress.com, where you can find out all the polishes and creams and Sophia products that we use in the videos. But for now, I'm out of here. I'm going to the gym. So I will catch you guys in the next video.